Kathy, 2024 is a very significant year for SA Quilters, formerly the Quilters Guild of South Australia, because it's our 40th birthday. In 1984, a small group of women formed our guild, and I wonder if they could ever have imagined that it would evolve into the most amazing organisation that it is today. We're here today to talk to two of those original uh, founding members, one of whom was our inaugural president. So we're going to go in and have a chat to them and find out what we can about the very, very early times of our group. Rachel Detman, Lane Gardner, welcome to our very first 40th anniversary video series. It's a particularly special interview today because you are both founding members of the Quilters Guild of South Australia. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, you were our inaugural president. Right. What we hope to do in this series of videos is to interview, there's around 20 um, quilters who joined the Guild between 1984 and 1990. So we're hoping to interview as many of those as we can so that we can compile a, an informal oral history of the Guild. Mm -hmm. We'll be posting these videos on our YouTube channel and the very first thing I have to ask you both is, that, are you okay with becoming famous on our YouTube <laughs> channel? It's okay with me. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Up until 1983, 1984, if you were a South Australian interested in quilting, you operated in isolation mm -hmm. because there was no formal body. But somewhere in that time span, um, when books were few and far between and quilting notions were identical to sewing notions, you know, it was needle through the scissors, mm -hmm. a small group of you got together and decided to create a guild for quilters. Mm -hmm. So we would love to hear your story. <laughs> what, what got you together? What, what a wonderful universal collision <laughs> brought you together and um, the guild was born from that. Right, <laughs> we were friends. Can yes, you just, can you yes. just explain how we were friends? Well, we, um, my husband and Lane's brother-in-law uh, studied architecture together. Mm. So we met through that connection. And um, so my husband and I moved to South Australia from the States in 1977. And of course, there were no quilting shops. There weren't even any really in, in America as well. And um, so Lane and I met, and but we there weren't you know any groups. Although the Embroiderers Guild, we both had joined the Embroiderers Guild, but there wasn't really their emphasis was more on embroidery, not on patchwork and quilting. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just thought that it would be you know, be nice to, as a group, to form a group so that we could start exploring what was important to It was, was really you who had that idea. <laughs> you belonged. <laughs> you belonged to the, was it the Sydney one? Or the Melbourne one? Well, I, I don't think I belonged, but I knew about the Sydney okay. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was um, back at the union and I was doing a lot of uh, craft work, quilting, not quilting, actually. So I asked you to help me with quilting. You taught me how to quilt. And so you came to the college and um, talked to people there and we just discovered a piece that we made together yes. at the, yes. the uh, Salisbury Teachers College, it was. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were having coffee one morning and you brought this up. <laughs> and I thought, wow, <laughs> sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. yes. and it went from there. Yeah. Well, I think we thought as if we uh, were a, uh, a formalized group, then um, we could uh, include other people who would be interested in patchwork and quilting. And so we were fortunate in that we met um, through the Crafts Council of South Australia. I think that was Jude Adams that we met initially. So. And she really informed us about how to form a quilters guild. There were already probably 20 other, uh, what did they call them, guilds? You know, there was the leather workers and the, mm -hmm. the glass blowers, and I think they were called guilds as well. And so she, they helped us 
with all of the formalities because we, we knew that we had to be, you know, be a legal, become a, a legalized body. So mm. that was very helpful. Yeah, particularly uh, that um, uh, lawyer who helped us with the constitution. Ginny yeah. Good, yes. And that, that was fabulous for me because I've never done a constitution. I've worked in small groups before. Mm -hmm. We'd never had to address that. Mm -hmm. And she spent hours, hours yes. with yes. us yes. doing that. Yeah, well, right. at the beginning, we realized that as a, a you know, a body of quilters, we, we couldn't, you know, we, we, there were certain things we had to do, and what were some of those things? We had to be, how do we make ourselves An legal? incorporated yeah, in, body. So yes. that, was, that was really good to learn how to do that. Yes, yeah. Um, giving a bank account, um, what else? Well, we had to charge fees, and... Um, you know, just determine mm -hmm. um, how we wanted to to run. Organize venues. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was all new things. Everything, you know, speakers, mm -hmm. whatever. So, what, what yeah. were some of your early venues? Well, yeah. we started out. We started out at the Arts Council down on mm -hmm. on uh, South Terrace, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's where we had our first meeting. Somehow we advertised around, and there were about thirty five people that came. And to sh saying that we were interested in starting a quilters guild, and fifteen people out of the thirty six signed up to be on the committee, and so we met there for a bit, but we very quickly outgrew that venue, and then we went to Gartrell mm -hmm. uh, uniting. Um, but it was interesting because there were a lot of other sort of craft groups, and most of them only had twenty or thirty people. To begin with, we had 35 <laughs> to start with, and then we outgrew Gartrell. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I think we went to, to Burnside. Mm -hmm. And briefly yeah. to Green Hill Road when uh, Burnside was being Oh, yes. Uh, redeveloped. That's right. There was mm -hmm. a short period in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember Gartrell uh, with great fond memories. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the warmest of halls no. in the winter, and mm -hmm. those of us. That were, or anyone that was on the executive committee got to sit down the back near the heater. It was <laughs> worth being on exec just to be near the heater. Yes. But it, right. um, it had a room behind the main hall, and that's where some of our early workshops were held, yes. wasn't it? Yes. What yes. can you tell us about some of those early workshops? Well, <laughs> we're trying to remember. Yeah. I think mm. um, uh, somebody named Sonia Barrington, Sonia Lee Barrington, she may have come and been a speaker. And um, also Margaret Rolfe mm -hmm. came and did, we did some work with her. Um, uh, they were more our speakers in the workshops. I can't remember what. <laughs> it was a long time it ago. Was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't have strong memories of that. I do have memories of coming back and doing uh, quilting. And once again, I think around up here. Yeah, yeah Gartrell. Yes, mm -hmm. where there was a huge, where there was a huge, it was packed with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And you know, bringing in your um, sewing machine and doing things like that and sitting with people who had come from Peru, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of those big workshops we had Ginny Byer here, didn't we? Yes, yes, yeah. Because yeah. you, were, you were early on. Did yes. you join early yes. on? Yeah. Uh, 1985 yeah. I joined. Yeah, yeah. Well, there were so many things to set up and, um, you know, the, the, the newsletter and the, um, the workshops and the constitution mm -hmm. and insurance and all those sorts of things. But I think uh, everyone was so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask were there obstacles. There really weren't because yeah. everybody was so keen about, you know, Giving their input into it, so everybody just, you know, really worked hard mm. to get these things to. We did have a conversation before about um, what sort of women we were, and it was mainly women. Mm -hmm. There were a few men involved, but and our men supported us, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> but most of us were quite well educated, mm -hmm. we, and most of us mm, had time mm -hmm. to be volunteers. Uh, so, I think that reflects really interestingly on the guild that that 
opportunities there for women and um, that we use them. Mm. And it certainly did uh, give me lots of opportunities, uh, mainly because after that, at that time I was involved with a lot of those small groups, not just quilters. Uh, and it, just knowing how to organise um, insurance and uh, bank accounts and things like that, which I never really had to worry about, um, then became positives for other groups that I was involved with. Mm. And I think about that when I ended the time with um, Cool Skill, I decided to, to spend most of my time with community arts. And so it was the, a, a stepping stone for me. It's the, the background that I've had from being in Cool Skill. Mm. So it was, just, it was a start for me to become what I now call myself an artist because I still recognise the difference between artists and quilts. <laughs> <laughs> now, I first became aware that the Guild existed because you had, um, I think, two exhibitions at the Unley Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And I went along to those and, you know, got quite enthusiastic. But I think there's a few stories about at least one of those exhibitions about the kinds of quilts that were on show. They weren't all necessarily finished. Yeah, like this, this one. <laughs> This wasn't finished, but we decided we'd put it in. Some of the committee put in their unfinished quilts. So, yeah. And those, those were fine. times when, if we did a workshop, um, and the subsequent exhibition, we had five of that workshop and five of another. There was a, a commonality to our um, mm -hmm. quilt shows, which uh, just isn't the case these days. Yes. There's so yeah. much more diverse now. I think at that time, too, Robin Messinger yes. had... Uh, because uh, we didn't really have quilt shops per se. Mm -hmm. She was working with Johnson, it's a, just called Johnson's Fabrics, I think. Yes. And uh, so she actually did started doing some workshops because they did have a very small section section of quilting fabrics. And uh, I can remember she did a workshop. Right. Uh, and she, yeah. she opened one of the very first quilt shops where Big W is at yes. Cumberland Park, yes, isn't she? she like did. Little sh group yeah. of shops there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, apart from the um, early exhibitions, you were also involved in other projects. What were some of the other projects? Well, one was the Quilt and Visions, the, um, the, this booklet. Excuse me. Well, I'll just get this one. Yeah. Which you were. But that's quite interesting, in fact, because that's, oh. that's the. Uh, well, you've got some uh, notes and things. Yeah. yeah. But you wrote this. Did I? Oh, heavens. Oh, yes, it's my writing. Yeah. You, uh, you did all the. Um, <laughs> all the finances. You did. <laughs> I have no recollection of that. No, I even, is, uh, you even go big eyes. Oh, this is this. this oh, is all, all the receipts and walk down memory lane. Mm. I do know that for a long, long time after this project was um, completed, we had some money in the bank yes. because we couldn't contact one of the participants, and mm. it sat there for years and years and years. And oh. finally, the bank contacted me. I must have been one of the signatories. And it said, you need to shut this account down. What do you want to do with this money? Um, I think I might have run you. You just said, donate yeah. it to the Guild because yes. we had no idea. And I can't remember who that person was, but right. we could not track her down yes. to give her Diane. A, a very small Diane share McKenzie. of the profits. Diane McKenzie, perhaps. It was a Diane. Where is she? Yeah, there she is. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I still have this piece. And you were part of that project. I was. Yeah. yeah. So that was. You were actually, with um, yeah. Winnie, Winnie Pelts, weren't you? Actually, we might take some photos from this book later. Mm -hmm. and, um, you can have. We've got, you've got lots. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've got one somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we might we take, take some the photos. Book. Yes. And we'll yeah. do a little write up about it. I've got. I brought a few books. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the only project you were. Oh, should we talk about what that project was? Because it was pretty visionary, wasn't it? Well. Um, it started because I noticed it, a, a very similar one in America that was happening, 
and at the time I was working with um, Grass Council and I used to have quite a lot of meetings at, um, what's that? Was Grass Council? Was it the Jam Factory? The Jam Factory, mm. yes. And so at one of those meetings at the Jam, uh, I brought it up and I had taken photos of the pieces from America. And so we went through that, and quite a few people ended up being the artists involved in that uh, were there, and they liked the idea. And so Rachel and I got together. And we did a lot. We mm -hmm. went out and um, it was supposed to be a collaborative project. An um, artist with a quilter. So yeah. the artist would produce a piece of work and then the quilter would design a quilt yes. based on that piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. Or the artist, it just, it might have been a, a piece of the artist already done. It didn't have to be, excuse me, the actual. Um, this, this is Rachel's yeah, yeah. piece. This was my piece with, with Barbara Henrihan. Did you bring... No, I think what? so. I can yeah. turn one more. What? <laughs> She's on her side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and this central mm -hmm. piece is in frame. I actually had that piece, so the, the painting. Oh, what do you? The original piece. Oh, wonderful. I, I do too. I've got, a, yeah, I've got one too. One, one as well. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so they, it, they, they got, people got together. And we went and um, recorded them, didn't we? We typed up all the, the notes the that, that went with it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think they're in that little booklet. That's there how we are. put the notes yeah. together. There. But that was 1988, so that was a little bit uh, later. There was, we also had the suitcase mm -hmm. exhibition, mm -hmm. which I think was, uh, it, my notes say 1985, which was a year, mm -hmm. um, you know, after we started. What did that involve? And well, I think each state, it must have been organized again by maybe a crafts council, mm, uh, a, a yeah. national one. Mm. And so each state was producing a suitcase that could be uh, with quilts and I think other memorabilia in it. And then it was going to travel. So maybe a dozen suitcases ah, were going to travel around Australia. around Australia. And I had a quilt in there. Um, that this one probably can't, uh... I remember yes. that quilt, and it's now in the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney. Oh. Um, I'd love to have it back, but <laughs> and talking of exhibitions, if we just go back a, a bit. That um, quilted visions that was exhibited at the festival centre, wasn't it? Mm, and all around Australia. And then it travelled yeah. around mm. Australia. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this, I think the um, this one travelled around Australia. How long well. did it travel for? About a year, longer. Yeah. Did I write down what? what uh, five years. Five years. Five years. Yeah. Mm. So I don't yeah. remember it, but I assume that some of our early Festival of Quilts may have had suitcase exhibitions from other states. Perhaps. Possibly, possibly, mm. possibly, yeah. I remember all those things yeah. 40 years ago. Well, it's a long time ago, wasn't it? <laughs> it is, it did. <laughs> well, I travelled a bit with um, Quilted Visions. I went to Queensland and where else did I go? And I mean, quite a few of the local ones. Yeah. And I then did um, quilt classes as I went along. <laughs> yeah, did you go to yeah. some of those places? Yeah, as I went to yeah. Yeah. Mildura. That was interesting, Mildura, Renmark. Uh, I went to the meat market. Yeah. In Melbourne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, which one have I left? With Warwick. Yeah. So, how yeah. did you show them when you went to these places? Did yeah. You I, was it literally a hold up or did you have no, frames? No, no, it was in galleries. I, oh, in galleries, I, all right. I started um, touring exhibitions, not just quilts. And so I found out who all of the, lo the local uh, galleries were. <laughs> not, ne not necessarily all the big, I mean, the Meat Market is a big gallery in Melbourne, but, and I'd just write to them, or ring them up and ask if they wanted it. And they had, they had to pay us, I think, if I'm having a right, what records. records. Yeah. 
Um, for this is you know there's a lot of travel to do with, with packing the things, traveling them. We did have a, have a problem with the bed. If you remember the bed? Oh, the bed, it? yes, yes. So yes, um, so. yeah, and that had to come back. Yeah. And we and Colin just redid yeah. it or something. But I think that one actually disappeared. I think no, that we ever got it. Yeah. I think somebody. I mean, who was who was who was the bed? <laughs> It was the fun part and of the exhibition. And it's not unusual. Yeah. You know, I've toured tra quite a few exhibitions where we've lost a piece mm -hmm. and it just disappears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the insurance is never that good to be able to... Mm -hmm. Well, how good that those um, quilts and those pieces of artwork were on display for an extended amount of time in those various mm -hmm. locations. Mm -hmm. Lots of people watching mm -hmm. enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there must have been an aspect in those early years of spreading the word and I think I read in your notes that one of your priorities was uh, embracing um, country groups in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you focused on our groups as um, a part of or affiliated with the guild. <laughs> I'm not sure I remember that specifically, except that I think um, rather than each country group joining each member in a country group joining individually they joined as a group mm -hmm. and so it was one membership um but i think did you tell me that there are now there's 500 people 500 that, full members in, and in over 2000 in affiliated groups now kathy's the membership secretary that so is just that's incredible. incredible 530 members and 88 groups with around 2,000 individual members. Yes, that's Isn't that remarkable. amazing? Yes. Is, well, I think in those early days, I mean, I can remember Robin and I went probably to York Peninsula or somewhere, and we'd do some different workshops, and you may have done some too, I can't remember. Mm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I think one of the wonderful things is that so many of the initiatives that you... Um, initiated are still part of the guild today and yes. certainly we've evolved and there's a whole lot of new um, mm -hmm. uh, opportunities but uh, you had you showed a lot of foresight mm -hmm. back then we, we had a lot of um, guidance from the crafts council now they wouldn't have known specifically about uh, quilting but they knew we needed a constitution we needed a treasurer we need to be um, you know financially accountable mm -hmm. or whatever and did you say insurance and we mm. needed mm. workshops and all of those things and I, I remember they were a bit bemused that at our first meeting um, we had 36 members 36 people came to the first meeting at the Arts Council on South Terrace and 15 people signed up that night for to be on the committee yeah. and the Crafts Council said the other Guilds, you know, jewels and work, jewelry and woodworking, and they're lucky if they get 20 or 30 permanent yeah. members. But we decided that perhaps it's because for many of us, uh, we have a history of sewing in our families. Mm -hmm. Our mothers at that time may have, um, you know, it was after the Depression and so forth. So we would have grown up. My mother made my clothes. Mm -hmm. I was looking so fantastic. <laughs> Uh, we're and, also and of a generation where we made our own clothes yes, when we were younger. Exactly, yes, exactly, yes. Can I, I, can I just make one comment? I, what intrigues me is how well you communicated because 40 years ago we didn't have the technology no. or the communication op opportunities that we have now. Right. I mean, there was no mobile phones or no. emails no. or uh, digital, you know, digital paraphernalia that we could use. So no. that intrigues me that you must have been... You were ahead of your time. I don't know how you did it. You did know, you do it by smoke signals or something? Well, you know what? I think, Kathy, it's because of the enthusiasm of people. You know, I think that um, people were just keen and eager to... Elaine and I have been members of the Embroiderers Guild, but they didn't have a real patchwork emphasis, as we know. And, um, you know, we decided that's what, what we wanted to create. And... Mm -hmm. You know, because we were organised people, we could... And, but everybody that would set up a committee, whether it was the workshops or the newsletter or whatever, we all just collaborated. You know, yes. It was really 
It was just very exciting. And they were good people. Yeah. We were all, um, yeah. Very cooperative people. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, interested. And it, if, you, if you didn't get it quite right the first time, well, you kind of like that. Exactly. I, I think the Embroiderers Guild is celebrating 50 years this year. They might. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, yeah so. It's, it's, yeah, a couple of my other groups are celebrating this year too, so. It was also, I guess, historically a time when um, the whole women's rights movement and, uh, you know, it was just a sort of hot potato that we didn't necessarily have to be housewives and, mm -hmm. you know, we had a right to, to express ourselves through creative endeavours. Mm -hmm. It was, I guess, worldwide an interesting time to be alive um, and to, to be at the mm -hmm. grassroots of an organisation like yes, this. Yes, yes. I think, as I recall, that it was in 1971 that there was a, an exhibition in New York at the Whitney Museum, and it was a quilt as art. And that was the, the beginning of the interest, because we didn't have any quilt shops, per mm -hmm. se. But it was, you know, of course, quilting is very ancient. It goes back to the Egyptian times. Um, but it hadn't had its renaissance again in America. So there weren't quilt shops like my first quilt is made out of synthetics and all kinds of things, which we didn't have anything here either. But that was sort of mm -hmm. um, in the 70s when there, the interest, and because so many of our mothers had sewn, or we had, you know, most of us had some kind of sewing skills. So it just seemed to, to flourish. I won a sewing prize in the years. Did you? Six of um, primary school. What, what, what had you made? I made a little, um, it was for keeping handkerchiefs. Oh, oh handkerchief caps. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it with you right now. I think they just wanted to I don't know why they wanted to yeah. get rid of it. We wanted to, to express about what the uh, this organisation meant to you and your, your own career. Well, yeah, well, to some extent, um, it is. I've, I've said to lots of times to Rachel, it really made me aware that I could do uh, a lot of things with knit, um, especially with um, fabrics. Um, I was um, home ed teacher, as I seem to remember you. I oh, was, yes. And so I ended up with quite a lot of time doing things with, clothing but and not so much with needlework certainly not any um, quilting but it was the it was the basis of my life and so I from there also uh, I was a migrant I think you're talking about you you being a migrant um, and so I became involved with migrant communities especially new migrants who'd arrived in Australia mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of funding um, because I'd been involved in our grant, grant applications for, mm -hmm. I knew how to get grant, grant, grant money for various um, Very important things. Uh, yeah, it's so a whole new school set, wasn't it? it yes, mm -hmm. it is when you actually are um, involved with that. And so, um, you know. And she's I, still doing event for that. <laughs> Tell, tell about what you've got going now. Um, well, uh, uh, for March, I'm doing uh, an exhibition. Um, a woman that you might know, not uh, Nola Jones. <laughs> yes, sorry, I keep wanting to call her Lola. Nola Jones died last year. She's an uh, artist, well known, fairly well known artist in Sydney. Uh, she does collage work. Um, she, uh, a friend of mine, is you know, the beneficiary of her all her work, and brought up another thing from me because I've obviously got a lot of work at home. And where where does it go if you when you die and you then are uh, you have all of this work and you love it? It's fabulous work. My friend has been distributing it around all of her friends, but one of the things that Nola wanted was for it to be shown 
And so I've organised an exhibition up in Clare for um, some of her work to go on display throughout March in, in a, the collective at Clare. Mm -hmm. um, I've just finished organising an exhibition for the Bar Art Gallery. I was the um, director there for a few years. Um, so, uh, what else am I doing? <laughs> the cook, the... Hmm. Did they have library hand 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 at that Burra exhibition? They do have them. They, they, have, they have some of, yeah, I think we saw. Yeah, I loaned some my work for them. Yeah. Well, some of my work for Hamilton Hall for that exhibition. Mm -hmm. So, I'm still involved with those things. I'm doing some work at the moment for a, an exhibition that goes around Australia from the weird, Spencer Weavers Guild. Mm -hmm. They do a similar to the suitcase exhibition in type ID, you do the, you make this piece, it's about, I think it's eight, cent, eight centimetres by eight centimetres. Um, and then they're all collected, they go around once in, every year they have this exhibition that goes around. And I've just organised for that exhibition, well I've not actually done it, but it's on the cards, the, the, that exhibition has the tour too. So. What about you, Rachel? What have you continued your quilting journey? Oh, I certainly have, <laughs> yeah. but not not in the way that Lane has. I haven't been. I think you know those first few, five maybe seven or eight years, I can't stay very involved with the with the guild, mm -hmm. and then I think I just found because I was, you know, working and had a young child and so forth that I didn't want to be on committees. I really, if I had any time, I wanted to be sewing. And so um, I, I really, you know, just stuck with that. I don't think I've been involved in any formal way, but I still. How many quilts? But I've made 50. You got some? And, well, I've, I've, my and husband. And a book. And a book, <laughs> yes. Oops. My husband and, well, since he left architecture, is concentrated on photography. So um, my husband did the photography and my daughter, who's a journalist, uh, did all the script. So um, they produced this book a few years ago with all my work in it. Just, it's a one-off book, is it? Oh, well, you can order them, but they cost about $120, so it's not, uh, but you know, it's it's my history of. And all of our oh, quilts. Gosh. Well. Yeah. What an amazing family mm -hmm. initiative. Yes. So it's, you know, we, we have so many things on slides mm. or photographs, but, you know, we don't really pick up photo albums too much anymore. So, so you can put it on your quilts. Do you hand quilt still? Or do I you still do. Quilt? No, I cannot. You know, I've never been a machine person, Chris. Excuse me. This. Um, See that one, Kathy? Yes. This was a quilt I think I made probably early 80s. And I still love it. Oh, it's so yeah, soft. I know. I still use this this pattern right here yeah. on so many quilts. Um, and really, back in those days, all we had was plain old muslin, or we called yes. it calico, didn't yes. we? Yes. So many mm. of my quilts, um, mm -hmm. and yours too, were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No fancy white-on-white no. white backgrounds. No, or, that's right. Um, yeah. But this is one of my early quilts, and it's always been my favorite. We wouldn't be the amazing organization that we are without your foresight and your commitment um, way back in 1984-85. And over those 40 years, countless women and men have benefited from the companionship, the knowledge, the skills and the of fellow quilters here in South Australia. We now have over 500 members and 2,000 affiliate members, roughly, and you have created that legacy. What an amazing legacy. So on behalf of any South Australian or interstater who has been a member of the Quilters Guild of South Australia, thank you both. Thank you so much for, for being just such an um, amazing women. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Thank, thank you. Lovely day. Thank yes. you. Enjoyed it. Yes. Good.